Okay, so let's say we have a rhombus, and rhombus is a parallelogram. Let's just say I drew this perfectly and it's a rhombus. Um, and you're given that one of the angles in the rhombus is 34 degrees, and one of the sides is 7. Um, if you have this information, knowing the fact that this is a parallelogram, and more specifically a rhombus, you now know what everything else is in this uh, quadrilateral. You know all the sides, and you know all the angles. Well, why so? Well, a rhombus is a parallelogram. So based off of that fact, we know, we know uh, actually four things. We know that if this is 7, the opposite side must also be 7. Okay. We also then find out that um, if I know that this is 34 degrees, I know that my opposite angles are congruent. And I also know then that uh, because my adjacent angles are supplementary, meaning they add to 180 degrees, I know that I have 146 degrees for my other two angles. All right, cool. So I got all of that just from parallelograms. Now, there's something else that's kind of cool here that I can see, or you may, may, you may or may not be able to see. Um, from just the parallelogram. If I were to draw a diagonal here, it would split this angle in half, of course. Well, then I would have an isosceles triangle. Isosceles triangles have to have, they have since the base angles would be the same, the uh, isosceles triangle would end up being, uh, having two sides that are congruent. And the two sides would be here and here, All right? So if I just imagine that if you drew a dotted line through here, this would split this angle in half, so it would be 73 and 73, because it still adds up 180. Well, if these two angles are the same, their opposite sides have to be the same. We learned that with, tri with trigonometry. So this has to be 7, and this has to be 7. Well, that makes sense. By the definition of a rhombus, all sides are congruent, right? Yes, they are. So um, this only happens in some special cases. But when all sides are congruent, it's a rhombus. Okay, So you don't have that just every time that you have a parallelogram. But uh, we do in this case because of how we've set this problem up to be, because um, it is a rhombus. Rhombus have all sides congruent. Um, so that is an example with a rhombus. If you're given just one angle and one side, you now know everything else about it. You know all other three angles and all other three sides if it's a rhombus. Let's look at if it is a rectangle. Okay, so if it's a rectangle and I'm given two sides, I know everything about this. Well, I don't, you didn't give me anything about the angle. How do I know about the angles? Because it's a rectangle. Remember, rectangle means to rectify the angle or to make it right. So if you make the angles a right angle. So we get So we get four right angles. Well, why is it four of them? Well, there's four angles in here. And this rectangle is equal angular, <clears throat> as we've discussed before meaning that all angles are congruent. Another way to look at that is that the angles have to add up to 360 degrees because it is a quadrilateral. 360 divided by four will give you 90 for each one of these, okay? And also, because of the parallelogram, opposite sides have to be congruent. So that's three, this is three here, but that's four, this is four here. And so that is why a rectangle works the way it does. And so there are a lot of cool things that people do with rectangles all the time. They find diagonals because it's a lot easier to. You can do it with a parallelogram, you can do it with a rhombus. You can find the diagonals because you know the law of cosines. Here you can use the law of cosines, but what you end up seeing is that the law of cosines will yield this to just be the Pythagorean theorem. And so we'll end up having that uh, 4 squared plus 3 squared, uh, which will give you 25, must equal the square of this side. So the side must be 5. And you also get the other diagonal will be the same, which, of course, again, makes sense. All right. So that is what we get with uh, rectangles. We can find the diagonals very easily using the Pythagorean theorem. The sum of the, the, sum of the square of the legs is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. Uh, we know that the angle, we automatically know the angles if we're told it's a rectangle because the angles have to be 90. That's right. 
Um, and we can do some uh, trigonometry in order to find out more things. Like we have a diagonal, we can find out how much this angle is here versus this one here, um, because we can use uh, trig in order to find that out. All right, so there's one more uh, special parallelogram that we will look at. And that's everyone's favorite. And that is a square. So with the square, all you have to be given is the length of one side. Well, why is that? Because you know automatically that all the sides have to be equal. And all the angles have to be equal. Because a square is a regular quadrilateral. Regular means all sides and angles are congruent. So because all angles are congruent, and it's a quadrilateral, that means it has 360 degrees, we know just like with the rectangle, this must be 90 all the way around. Now, because all sides are congruent, it's equilateral, just like a rhombus, meaning that all the sides have to be the same. So since that's two, this is two, this is two, and this is two. All right, and that's it. The great thing about a square is you can just be given the diagonal distance, and you automatically know what these two sides should be. And you can do that using the Pythagorean theorem. Um, and let's take a look at that just to see. So I'll claim that this is 2 square root of 2. So you can approximate that in your calculator if you would like. Uh, but I'm going to claim that that's what it is. And let's just say we didn't know what the two sides were. But we know they're, they're equal in measurement, right? So I'm going to put an x here, x here. And this is a right triangle. So what I'm going to do is say x squared plus x squared equals 2 square root of 2 squared. OK? All right. And when you plug that into the calculator, or when you multiply it times itself, 2 times 2 is 4. Square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2. 2 times 4 is 8. Well, if we simplify this expression, we end up with 2x squared. OK. Well, if 2 times x squared equals 8, x squared must equal 4. If x squared is 4, then each side must be 2. So we just proved that each side of this would be 2. So with the square, all you have to be told, honestly, is that it's a square and be given one of its sides or just one of, di one of the diagonals. Then you automatically know everything else about the square. And this is why we love to use squares the most. Everyone wants to use, uh, everyone wants to use regular polygons for everything because they make everything a lot simpler to do. OK. So with parallelograms, opposites, opposite sides are congruent. Opposite angles are congruent. Adjacent angles are supplementary. And you can use trig to find out other pieces of information, like the diagonal and things like that. Uh, under parallelograms, we have rhombuses and rectangles. A rhombus is an equilateral quadrilateral, meaning that all the sides are the same. Uh, but it inherits all of the other properties from a parallelogram. A rectangle is an equal angular quadrilateral, meaning all the angles are the same. And it inherits all its properties from a parallelogram. And a square is a combination of both. It's equilateral and equiangular, meaning it is irregular. So a square is a regular quadrilateral. And therefore, all the sides are the same. All the angles are the same. All right. That's parallelograms. And I'll see you soon.